so we're going to get started then. So what we're going to do is make a few changes to this model. We're going to, as noted, responsive to some of the votes, we're going to be going and uh, doing some additional graphical output, and we're going to focus on this issue of interventions um, uh, and capturing targeted interventions, particularly if time allows, it's possible we'll start to deal with some implementation science things, but given the constraints, we probably won't be able to do more than talk about that. Okay, so um, apologies for the trouble there, but uh, glad the Google Drive eventually came through. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to go reflect on what happened yesterday. You may remember that we added a histogram yesterday. This histogram depended on a histogram data object. And this histogram data object was populated on a weekly basis by information from each person in the population. We went through each person in the population and we added their cumulative infection count to the database. We did something else as well yesterday too. You may remember that associated with the same event, we kept track of a running total of incidents for the week, and we had this thing called a data set, which was recording these. Remember that? And I said that each of those items in the data set on a weekly basis was recording the number of incident cases in the past week, but it also had a, a so-called horizontal access value that was the time. And that's why there is this checkbox for use time as horizontal value. We're going to take this one step further, combining ideas from those two basic things and from understanding of network information, we're going to put in place a scatter plot. Okay? A scatter plot. So this is the first time we've used this, but these can be very, very insightful as to what's going on in the model, particularly at an individual level and they can alert you to patterns. You may remember scatter plots in that very first model we encountered on the first day where we looked at association, say between distance from a convenience store, from a, from a grocery store versus weight, et cetera. Okay, so I'd like to add a scatter plot above this histogram. So I'd like you to go to view and go to the palette. And I'd like you to go to the analysis area of the palette. And specifically, I'd like you to drag in this thing that says plot. Not time plot, but plot. Next, I'd like you to drag in a data set. And we're going to name each of these appropriately. The data set is going to be named infection count degree centrality. data set. This is going to keep track for each person in the population of their infection count, cumulative infection count on the one hand, and their degree centrality on the other. Next, and you might even want to copy that name. Who needs TA help? Iden stands ready, vigilant. Next, I'd like you to go to the plot, and we're going to call it inf infection count degree centrality scatter plot. Boom. OK. 
Okay. Are you okay with that? Okay. I'd like you to define data here. Um, so we're going to have here a data set. This would be for, um, we, can, we can give each of the uh, axes. So infection count, that's on the x-axis versus degree centrality, that's for the y-axis. Okay, and we're going to ask it to use a data set, not a value, but a data set. Notice I'm switching from value to data set here, okay? Data set. And the data set that we're going to use is this dot infection count degree centrality data set. It's the data set we added. Okay, we're a lot of the way done. Probably about two thirds of the way done. And having this in place. This is a scatter plot. It's going to be plotting what's in this data set. Now you may remember, data sets contain pairs of things. That data set we had earlier, the weekly incidence data set we had earlier, it had pairs of things. The second of the pair, of each pair, was associated with the number of times an individual was infected. The x value, or horizontal value of each pair, was the time at which that was, was uh, uh, recorded. For this data set, by contrast, neither one is going to be time. So we're going to go to the data set, this data set here, this new data set, and we're going to uncheck use time as horizontal value. Okay? Do not check that. In other words, we're going to fully populate both the x and the y value of this data set. We're going to use its capability to record X and Y for each item in it. Okay? And we should say keep up to a thousand latest samples. Boom. Okay? Okay. So this, his this scatter plot depends on this data set. This data set is going to have x and y values, which are going to be mapped to x and y of the scatter plot. Okay? Okay. Next, in the final little thing here, we just go need to go down to the weekly reporting data set, and we're going to put in place another reporting process. And this reporting process is going to be directly mapped to the one above. So it's going to be basically the same thing as here. You can even think about copying this line, for example. But basically, it's going to consist of the following. Okay. First, you're going to say, by the way, this should, you notice it says this a cumulative thing dot reset, really it should be this dot cumulative infection count is going data dot reset. I'm just trying to be consistent in using this. Secretly it's accommodating if you don't, but it's just there will be times where we have to use cell for other things, okay? Or main, so I'm using this, okay? Next, I want to do the following. Just by analogy with this, I have to reset this data set. Before, before I go populate it with new data, I want to clear away the data from the previous week. So I'm going to say cumulative infection count histogram data dot reset. Boom. Just completely analogized to this. In fact, I'm going to put 
comments here. You don't have to put them, but I'm going to put them. Populate the histogram. And I'll put here, now populate the scatter plot. Sorry? So, sorry? Oh, sorry. Sorry. Sorry, what am I doing? I don't know why I said this. Yeah, no, 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 no. no. What? That's really weird. I guess I... I don't know why. That's really weird. Because I was looking at the right variable. But it's, it's infection... It's infection count... Thank you, Aiden. Degree centrality data set. That's what we want. It's this one here. Thank you, Aiden. That's great. Next, we should say person for each person in the population. That's what this means. It's going to go through each person in this population, call them person in turn, and then process them. Okay? I'm going to say, now, for each of those persons, what do I need to do? I need to put their information into this data set. So this dot infection count degree centrality data set dot, what do you think it's going to be? Add. We're going to add two things, a pair of things in there. Above, we only added one thing because it was just doing a histogram of one thing. Here we do a scatter plot. We have two things to add. The first thing, the first thing, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be the value, the x value we wanted, which is infection count. Okay? You know, I don't like that. I, I actually want to put infection count on the y axis because I think of degree centrality as as a contributor to infection count. Infection count is kind of the outcome. So I'm actually going to put degree, uh, I'm going to go switch this label later, but I'm going to put degree centrality on the x-axis. So I'm going to add it as the first element. So how do we do that? We say person dot get connections, bless you, number. And you do comma. That's the X. Person dot get connections. By the way, you notice first one to Terry's question from a few days ago. Not only does it not care about spaces, it doesn't care about white. Sp it doesn't care about a new line. So uh, often we put things on new lines. It, it ignores them. Don't don't worry about that. So so here we're going to add this as the X, and as the Y, we're going to add their cumulative infection count. I'm going to end this with a semicolon, and now we're done. Okay? What is going on is we are adding these two things. Now, now I feel really somewhat guilty teaching you this style because normally when we have a for loop, in general, we, we put curly brackets around the body inside there, these curly brackets. Now, if it's just one line, if it's just one statement in it like this, we actually don't need it. It's a single statement, it's a semicolon, it's a command. We actually don't need these curly brackets. But in general, you'll be fooling yourself if you think you can line several other things up under this that are indented and that it's going to put them all in the for loop. It's just going to do one. So it's better to have semi, to have curly brackets if you might add lines to it later. So I'm just going to put curly brackets to show these. These curly brackets, computer scientists love bracket-like things. We have round brackets called parentheses. We have square brackets. We have curly brackets. Sometimes you have greater than and less than sign brackets. Physicists kind of like them too. But, but computer scientists are just like connoisseurs of brackets. Yeah, it gives structure to it. And each one indicates different things for a given context. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, I put curly brackets around that. You notice I have this habit, but it's a widespread convention of indenting things. It communicates the structure of the code, okay? I'd like you to build this and call TAs if you have any trouble because they stand ready to serve. Okay? Okay? If, if it's okay, I'd invite you, if you built it and it's a happy camper, I'd like you to run it. Um, You should be able to go up here. Ooh, look at that. Oh, we forgot to do one thing. It's really it's really an an interesting we forgot to do two things. One is just rename the label. The second is is to prevent it from using these lines. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, let's go rename the label. So I went up to this label. I'm going up to this. going up to this graph, and I'm going to change the label so it says degree, so it says the first, the infection count is Y and the degree centrality is X, because it's almost like I'm predicting infection count based upon degree centrality. Okay, so I selected this graph, and I'm going to do two things to it. The first is I'm going to make it degree centrality being X, versus infection count Y. That's one thing. The second thing I'm going to do is go down to appearance and I want to uncheck draw line. So in this graph I make it degree centrality is X and infection count is Y rather than vice versa. So this is the label. The title is this. That's the title. Degree centrality is the first, is X, and infection count is Y. Okay? Oh? Oh, wow. We need to find the Seneca branding, one that has Seneca on it? Yeah, that's the one we tried to turn off and it wouldn't before. Is it the big one? Uh, it's, it's this one here with we, this button. Okay. That's the one that says Seneca. No, it doesn't say Yeah, it says Seneca. Oh, it does too. Okay, there's no other bars to it. Oh, this time it turned off. Yeah. Because before when we tried it, should we turn it on? Not yet. We let it wait. Okay, yeah. And then supposedly it should no longer be disconnected. Okay. That would be nice. That would be great. Yeah. Sorry, can I squeeze yeah, you past you? Squeeze past, and I'll Thanks. squeeze past. Yeah. Great. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was one change. The other change, I went down to the appearance accordion. You have to expand it. Is that called an expando in HCI language? Um, I went down and I unchecked draw line unchecked draw a line, okay? Okay, next, I would like to try running it. And we'll want to run it for a little bit until it gathers sufficient statistic. But what should we see here? Oh, oh, it died out. Okay, let's try this again. Run it. Hey, there's an interesting pattern. Okay, what are we seeing? Degree centrality is what? Is on the x-axis, right? No, no, no. We shouldn't, shouldn't need that. Um, no, I'll, I can take you to pin off the... This, we don't use this. We don't use that. No. And let's go get over here. So ladies and gentlemen, what do we see in this upper graph, the scatter plot? What is it telling us?
Yeah, so people who are more connected, wh which axis shows how connected they are? The x-axis. That's their degree distribution. Still disconnected indeed. Okay, so let's go. Yep. Thanks. Um, so the x-axis is their number of connections. What's the y-axis? Count of infection count. So what is it telling us? Yeah, the more, the more neighbors they have in the network, the more, more direct contacts they have with the network, the more times they've been infected, right? So some people have as few as three connections, and they tend to be more protected than people with, say, close to 22. Is it a definedly linear relationship? Mm, it, th there is a sort of overall structure to it, but there's this kind of interesting you know, uh, pattern here where we have a larger number. It doesn't quite go up linearly the entire length. There's kind of, uh, at this level, there's a high degree of variability, for example, and exposure. Uh, but it does show some sort of association between degree and infection count, to be sure. Now, if we were to go do things, like for example, let's, let's go look at how this change changes, for example, with um, an immigration count, or go, let's go to baseline with birth. Okay, we're gonna have baseline with birth. That was a previous, uh, a previous run we did. So now we have births going on. The above, we, we, we didn't have births going on. Um, now we have births going on, okay, people are coming in, people are dying, and people are leaving. I'm going to speed this up. Let's see. Here we go. Okay, how does that change the association? I'm going to pause it here. How does that change here? How, do, how does that change the association? We have births. What's going on? How has that changed that association? Is it is it is it still almost linear? Yeah. No. What? Can anyone posit an explanation for what's going on here? The linear ones. Mm. Get infected. So, like, why would why would this person here, this person at, at around? you know, 17 connections, a pretty serious number of connections, not have, you know, 60 to 70, like their compatriots up here, but instead have something like four cumulative infections thus far. Are they, are they really, really well protected? Maybe they are, could, maybe they're very young. Maybe they're born recently, right? Yeah, maybe they're, maybe they're, it's not that they're particularly well protected, they just haven't had that chance to be infected. These folks up here are probably have been around the bush a few times, right? Keep on, keep on running this. Generations are moving. Uh, we have this age specific death rate, right? Um, and we have this sort of pattern going on. So we see a, a quite different pattern. Now, if we wanted to do so, and it wouldn't be a bad exercise, it won't lead, lead you through it, um, but you could actually create two separate such graphs, one for older, one for younger. Or you could mask out those who are less than a certain age very readily, right? But you know, the general point here I want to communicate is that with different processes going on, 
it can change these associations rather dramatically, can't it? Eh. Eh. Um, so we see this, sorry? Yeah, because that oldest cohort is now dying out, right? That oldest cohort was highly, had their infection counts highly shaped by their experience. And now you're getting people of all different ages mixed. And I would argue probably this distribution now reflects as much people's age as their degree. You don't see this pronounced effective degree. I would argue probably that first group was particularly vulnerable. Why? When we started out, the vast majority of people were what? Were susceptible. Now we have this thoroughgoing mix of different people. And the associations are less clear. Maybe if we age stratified it, we would see an association. Heck, let's, let's, let's do the poor person's version of it if we could. Let's go temporarily. You have to be very cautious when doing this. So don't do it at home. But, well, should we do it in a principled way? Yes, we should do it in a principled way. Okay. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to... I'm going to add into here a parameter that's going to be minimum age for scatter plot. <laughs> kind of a crude, a crude measure. And it's by default, it's going to be zero. Okay? Anyone greater than or equal to that age is going to end up in the scatter plot. If it's a default value of zero, they're all going to end up in the scatter plot. But I'm going to use this to restrict those that we show in scatter plot. Minimum age for scatter plot. Hmm. Maybe we'll add, hey, we'll add a what age for scatter plot? Maximum. Hey, that's nice. If I click on this and I drag with the with the with the uh, left button held down and I drop, it copies it. And then I don't have to retype that long name. I can just change it to, from min to max at the beginning and get rid of the one at the end. Ooh, that's great. And the maximum age for the scatter plot will be a thousand. <laughs> Even if they're Methuselah, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, include them in the scatter plot by default. But now, ladies and gentlemen, we have a sharper lens. Let's, let's look at it in an age stratified, well, let's look at it for age specific way. Let's look at it for age 50 to 60. Can we? Is that okay? 50 to 60? Hearing no objections, we'll proceed. So ladies and gentlemen, we want to incorporate a a, a scenario here which is shown from age 50 to 60, okay? So we're going to say copy this baseline with birth and we're going to paste that in, okay? So we just made a copy of that of that scenario, right? Next. I would like you to go to that new scenario, which is called baseline with birth one. It sticks a one at the end. And I'm going to say at um, scatter plot 50 to 60. How's that? It's a little bit contrived, but um, it's not too bad. And so how are we going to specify it to only show 50 to 60? Hmm? 
Well, we'll say the minimum age from which we should show it is what? 50, and the maximum age is 60. Great. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're almost done. But right now, this is full of sound and fury, and it signifies nothing. Why? If I specify this, is it going to look any different? Not yet, because I haven't operationalized it yet. I actually haven't effected it. I haven't realized that. Where do I have to put the logic to screen it out? In, yeah, in the reporting, in this event. So in the event, what do I have to do to, only, to make sure that only those within that age range are shown? I have to check the person's age, okay? So here, within this for loop, I'll say if, and I'll say person dot current, oh, current block. I thought we had their age as a uh, age in years. Person dot age in years, ladies and gentlemen. If person dot age in years is greater than or equal to, that's how you write it, 50.0, I'll put this up in the big board, and then you have to say and, it's double ampersand, that ampersand is above the seven key on my keyboard, and person dot age in years is less than or equal to 60. Oh, uh, oh, sorry, what am I doing? 50? No. We want to say, we want to generalize that. We want to make it what? This dot minimum age for a scatter plot, and, and we want it to be this dot maximum age for a scatter plot. Okay. Okay. Maximum age to scatter plot. So let me put this up on the big screen here. Okay. Now I'll put semi. I'll put square brackets or read curly brackets around that too, so that it's it's clear. It's all within the if. There we go. And I'll put this all up on the big screen. Okay. There we go. Copy that. Hey, come on. Get back here. Okay, boom. Okay, and so it looks like this, okay? Okay, uh, oops, what am I? Yes, okay. Only if that person lies within the age range are they going to be added. And man, I, I, this is not changing this add thing. Let me let me make it smaller just so it's 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 clear. Okay, so we're gonna add this. This isn't changed, this line here. Okay. Um, there. Okay. Okay, so what is that doing? What, is this, what does this thing mean? It means and. If this person's age is at least the minimum age and it's less than or equal to the maximum age, then we're going to do what? Yeah, good. Good. Okay. So this is the logic. So 
In short, we're only going to show people whose age range is between minimum and maximum. Here, I'll put it up there again. Multiple curly brackets. I have a curly bracket around this, and then I have a curly bracket within that. So this is the code which is within if, and this whole if thing is within the for loop. So I'd like you to try building it. And I'd like you to try running it. So now we're going to have to scatter plot. Is the scatter plot going to show everyone in the population? Okay, so let's 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 move this. Oh, looks like nobody's. Huh? What's that? Oh, oh, well, there we go. There we go. Okay, now it's fifty to sixty-year-olds. Oh man, that was the initial one. After that, is there much of an association? Not much of one. Not much one. In the initial population, there was. Here, it's not clear that there's a particularly strong association. Even age specific. There's variability here, but these younger people, these may be mostly younger people down here, and these may be mostly older within that range here. There doesn't seem to be too big a gradient associated with degree centrality. A nice hypothesis undercut. You would think that coming out of this might be an emergent pattern that those with higher degree centrality are more exposed. And that is true for the initial population, but not, ladies and gentlemen, for this lady later population, it seems. If there's any gradient, it's a very weak one. We've limited it. And in the earliest years of life, how would we examine it for the earliest years of life? We could copy and we could paste. How would we do it for, let's say, uh, 0 to 10? How do we do that? We could change it to 0 to 10. And all we do is change the minimum and maximum from zero to 0 to 10. Okay. Okay, I'm going to run it. There we go. Zero to 10, there's We're not yet at 10 years. Okay, now we're past 10 years. Beyond that initial cohort, not much association in these youngest ages either. Okay, so we have a little tool here for investigation on a more focused level. Yes, Megan. Yeah. Uh, that's a good question. Right now, very good question. Right now, their network, so they're added into this population. This is where birth occurs. They're added into the population. And right now, where they end up is actually given by a random location. Um, this is not obvious, but we add them into the population, and it turns out that the population here 
has associated with it a rule that they go uh, X and Y. Now we could, by contrast, place them near the mother. And I've provided you another model where they are placed near the mother and they get the mother's connections. And I'd be glad to, if, if, if anyone's interested, it's in the example models I've provided you. It's in participant resources, example models. It's ABM models with birth, death, use any logic eight. That has that placement near the mother, okay? And using the social connections of the mother. So they, they have a social connection with their mother and everyone else that the mother's connected to, okay? Okay, okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's good with that. Okay, so we see now we can use scatter plots. Scatter plots give us a picture at the individual level. Each person is a dot and can tell stories about the relationships at an individual level between different factors. Often they can be quite insightful in alerting you to patterns, such as that pattern of initial vulnerability to infection, probably when the initial wave of the infection sweeps through. Scatter plots, in my view, are one of the more powerful mechanisms in any logic for depicting things. But we have limited time and lunch before us. I would like to propose turning our attention now to targeted interventions, okay? I'm gonna save this as model version 18 to go forward, and I'm going to post my version 17 for broader use. This is models built in class, as built, day five, and I will post my version 17. Excuse me, I already posted 17, so I'm going to actually call the new one. I should have planned this better. 19, no, and, and so I'll post 18 here. And then you'll know it's a new version with, with things in it. There we go. 18 is in day five. Should be in day five now, for, but seems to have some time associated with it. Okay, you don't have to get mine. You can continue to use yours if you're happy with it. Otherwise, if you want to get mine, you're welcome to do so. Next, I will pause this. I'm oh, sorry, I will save this.